like losing complete interest in playing games afterwards at all. I cannot remember what um, what we designed the game case to look like because another group was responsible for that. After the project was finished, we signed what we would know now as an NDA, but we signed paper promising secrecy. And if I am discovered, I may be in serious trouble. However, I believe this to be, um, I, however, I believe this needs to be known. At the beginning of this page, I mentioned the Sega Genesis CD. I was involved in several other projects after Polybius and eventually ended up on the Sega Genesis CD team. While we were designing this, an issue came up. It involved two processors syncing up. It turns out Polybius was discovered to use two processors, working in a way similar to the Sega CD. We were afraid of getting into trouble for using that same code, but we altered the game's BIOS anyways. However, most of the code that activated the mine altering system were in that BIOS. The actual game ROM needs that BIOS to run. It was very much a modern day console in that aspect. The mm -hmm. point is, I believe, we left quite a bit of the legacy code of the Polybius code in the Sega CD, at least the early versions. However, after we created the code for the Sega CD, I was shortly let go for misconduct. I have no idea why I was terminated and I was never contacted again by the company. Right, so th this was an original posting uh, by the by the cyber yogi, uh, <laughs> by uh, that username, um, and it was describing the development of the the game that was known as Polybius. So I I'm pretty sure that posting was tracked down after the original post, like the the February six two thousand uh, kind of. <laughs> you know, the February presentation of Polybius and listing on coinop.org on its little archive that this strange little black arcade case was responsible for things like uh, for, for kids, you know, apparently affected kids that played it. And it was associated with things like amnesia or these kids like playing this game and becoming strangely addicted to it. And they would forget like where they lived or they would forget things like their names um, uh, in the little postings. It's, it's remarked on about the, the design of the game itself being somewhat abstract for the time, being different from other games um, being either a combination of either kind of of like the vector type games that some people kind of remember where it's like you kind of move around um the outside but also having like shoot towards the center also yeah. having like a, a a number of like flashing lights and strange geometric designs that would be presented to the player um somehow you know, it did, affecting that sorry to interrupt dan but that that's what the thing that you're bringing up right now i had to look into because one of the big infamous uh emphasis in this, the research i did is the fact that this game offered both um vector and raster technology right which is completely unheard of at this at this point in time and like to dumb it down like from what i understand is raster is like pixel technology mm -hmm. right whereas raster they use some type of mathematical code and like i recognize that because that's actually the type of technology we use for ecgs at work right so it's a more of like the straight lines Right? And everything's yeah. done in lines as opposed to like pixels. And the fact that they were able to mix both of these was is absolutely unheard of for 1981. 81, because a lot of because like 85 is when the pixel stuff started taking over. And but like Dan we, was was saying with these symptoms, like Dan mentions it, but I like I read some more nefarious stuff, like kids are like having horrific nightmares after the fact. They were mentioned in having like seizures and attempted suicides after playing this game and like i don't know if you like have you guys ever heard of like reflex seizures before no so a lot of times like to, to, to like i guess layman's terms like dumb it down a little bit like you know your occipital lobe in the back of your brain that's where your visual input comes in and a lot of times like you've probably heard of somebody like seeing like strobe light or like bright flashing lights or patterns or something like that causing someone to have a seizure well, this, they put that in pretty much every video game now is there's like a warning for yeah. that type of stuff. Which, which is called a reflex seizure, right? Like it's basically you're overstimulating overstimula that part of the brain, which is causing us, causing the seizure, right? You can either have like a generalized seizure or a focal seizure. But those are other symptoms, Dan, that I've that I read that took place while playing Polybius. Well, not well, a, like another thing is like you some, like some people couldn't stop. And there was like sometimes like lineups for this game because it was new and so addictive 
that you know there was rumors of like you know you throw your quarter on i'm next and the guy just doesn't stop like to the point where they're like fist, either fist fights are breaking out right it's my turn right? but that makes to- sense right like you see a guy you come into the arcade you've been playing all day and you see this guy like camping on this machine right so you're gonna be like i want to fucking i want to try this shit right yeah you're standing behind him you're tapping your watch yeah what well, doesn't even matter like especially if you're an arcade goer like the second you like walk in you're like holy shit what's that like even if it like didn't look that great, you'd be like, "I'll give it a try. It's new, right? Like, I want to yeah. see what it is." Well, even like about. even like the like the title screen of the game, so it goes, is that it was actually bigger and more detailed than other games of the era. And at that time, in the early '80s, like the RAM was super valuable and was used mainly for the games. So the title screen and all that was very basic, smaller fonts. When you get to like the the mid '80s. And the, the, the Nintendo comes around, and they, then they're putting the big titles. So this game, through all the all the internet rumors, at least seems it seems to be farther ahead. Like the combination of both game styles, bigger font, which seems to use more RAM than was available at the time. And not only that, a- Andrew, what was the guy's name? The the creator of Sinuslosion. Uh, Sinuslosion, right. the, the publisher, publisher, right? And uh, no other. It made no other. That publisher made no other games on the record, and that name kind of translates to sensory deprivation or senseless in like german rough translation so if you're like put, if you're like if you put those words on like google translate it would give a translation which not probably not correct german well that's what i understood from the it, apparently it's like it's two german words that are paired together that would not be paired together yeah it's so it's like, kind it's of like it seems like, like a made-up word yeah exactly yeah. uh Now, the actual gameplay is described to be something along the lines of, like, fast-paced action combined with puzzle elements, Uh, you know, perhaps creating this kind of addictive gameplay that a lot is reported to have um, entranced a number of of players uh, into this game. Um, With the coin op posting from 2000 there was information from a person who said that they were an actual operator uh of and ran one of the arcades uh where the machine had been placed now it's not unusual for you know games to come out and be and be placed in arcades and like small in small releases like having the kind of game come out here testers yeah a little like video game testers being set out into arcades so this was something that was not imagine Well, and I'd imagine too, like this is Portland, Oregon in the eighties. Like this isn't this, this, I would imagine is somewhat like of a small town at this time, right? Like these are small town, but it's not like the metropolis it is now. That's what I mean. Right. Like it's, it's definitely not this major, you know, major city center that you're planting these games in and hoping to get intention. Like it definitely seems like they're, they're putting it here to get some testing done. Right. It's like a what do you like a soft launch? Yeah. Well, it's like, it's like the people who had like the, the reported cabinets of like, Primal Rage 2 and oh, like some a great like, fucking well, game. Primal Rage and then Primal Rage 2 is supposed to come out and then it they only put out a couple cabinets and then it got canceled. That's a whole story, but <laughs> that's a whole story awesome. in itself. Yeah, Primal Rage but, is cool, um, one one point one million in Portland, nineteen eighty one. No, oh, so it is a metropolis. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty big. Know. It's like it, it's still like Wheel it back. Yeah, it's still like a good city. So it's like this was out in the suburbs though, so on the outside outskirts, kind of whatever of uh of Portland, Oregon, but putting this game out there and th- this small release, this person who reported to have ran one of these arcades was talking about that there was there seemed to be some guys in quote like guys in black coats who would reportedly come and they would collect information about the game and how it was played. They didn't care. They found it unusual that the, that these men would come in and they wouldn't be interested. Reportedly, they weren't interested about you know how many quarters people were, how much money people were spending, and how much whatever. But they were they were more interested in the behavior of the the players before and after um, they had their gaming experience. Mm-hmm. Did you doing. say these guys were wearing black? That's what they said. Guys in black, black guys in black clothes. Men That's in it. black, you would and say. One of, the, so one of the things Men I read is that like are currently wearing black, is what yeah. you're saying. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and one of the things that I uh, had read was that and when I was listening to some some of the accounts was that, you know, they would also like kind of stand and like keep watch on the building, right? Just peeking through the windows, like watching the machine as these lineups and stuff were were you know, queuing up around the Polybius machines. 
right? So they were like actively watching, like coming and going, but th at some cases they were just actively. Like, so you. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you wanna watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.